So you're trying to learn EKGs. Let's start by just identifying the waves, what they are. Now you're gonna hear me talk about a positive deflection and negative deflection. If the wave points up, it's positive deflection. The wave points down, it's a negative deflection. So here we have the P wave. It's our first positive deflection. This straight line that we see here is the isoelectric line. Think of that as your flat or your baseline to go off of. So our first positive deflection is the P wave. Now the P wave represents the atria depolarizing. Now what does depolarizing mean? Meaning that the atria is turned to contract, the atria is turned to fire, the atria is turned to go off. That's what the P wave represents. The atria's electrical conduction is being done at this stage. So we have electrical activity going through the atria right here. Okay, now I'll talk about intervals in a moment. So you'll see, well, let's stick to the waves first. Now, the next wave that we have is the Q wave. It's the first negative deflection on an EKG, okay? Now, the Q wave is part of the QRS complex. Now, here's the R wave. It's our second positive deflection on an EKG. The S wave is, you can see here, our second negative deflection on an EKG. Now, here's the deal with the QRS. Not every patient is gonna have a Q wave. So the QRS may just be an RS, <laughs> right? No Q wave. It's possible. Some patients, you have a Q wave. Depends on you as a person. Just you wanna make sure you're clear on that. The R wave's still gonna be positive up here. The S wave's still gonna be there, right? This is showing you a normal rhythm. Now this QRS complex right here, that represents the ventricles depolarizing, meaning electrical activity right now is going through the ventricles, which is gonna make the heart contract, all right? So this is the ventricles depolarizing, contracting, firing, whatever you want to call it. Now the T wave right here, as you can see, one, two, three, it's our third positive deflection on EKG. Now a T wave represents the ventricles in, a, in its relaxed state. So we call that in medicine repolarization. So the T wave is going to represent ventricular repolarization. So the ventricles are now in its resting relaxed state, right? Now you might be wondering, well, where, what wave represents the atria relaxing? Well, there is no way for that because the QRS, the QRS wave is so big that there is no atria repolarization wave. It gets buried, if you will. So that's some quick tips. Now, there are one, two, three intervals I'm gonna share with you. So the first interval is the PR interval. That is, you can see these lines right here I have. This represents like where to look at it, how to see on the EKG. So the PR interval is starting. We measure it from the beginning of the P wave, which is right here, to the first start of the QRS complex. So in this case, you can see here, it's right up into the Q wave, right? Obviously, if there's no Q wave, then we would go right up to the beginning of the upstroke to the R wave. Make sense? Okay. So that's our PR. It goes from beginning of the P to the start of the QRS complex. Now, next, we have the ST segment. So the ST segment is this. It, it is, goes from the end of the S wave, which is right here, is this line right here, to the beginning of the T wave, which is right here. This ST segment is where paramedics will look at and determine is the ST segment elevated? Is it depressed? Is it normal? And we look at that and we're talking about, does this patient have a heart attack on 12 with EKG? There are other factors that have to do with that, but this is the first thing we think about with the ST segment. You gotta know where it is. There it is. Next is the QT interval. So the QT interval we look at, is it too short? Is it too long? Is it normal, right? The QT interval starts in the beginning of the Q wave all the way down to the end of the T wave. So that's a little introduction. Let's go over a little more. With the P wave, remember the P wave represents atrial depolarization. 
With EKG, remember, we're talking about the electrical activity in the heart. The heart, yes, it pumps, it contracts. That's the muscle side of the heart, right? So if I, if my heart muscle is perfect in great condition, but my electrical side of the heart, it's not working properly, I have a problem pumping blood around my body, which vice versa, right? If my heart muscle is dying, but my electrical system's okay, well, eventually it's gonna have a problem because the muscle isn't moving, right? So that's, they work together. But EKG is talking about the electrical activity in the heart that tells the muscles to move, right? So the atria, depolarization is the P wave that we see. So think about it. If I have a problem with my P wave, I have a problem with my atria depolarizing. Curious complex represents the ventricles depolarizing, right? Again, remember, talking about electrical activity. So if I have a problem with my QRS complex, there's something wrong going on in the ventricles, right? T wave, ventricle repolarization, AKA, the ventricles gonna relax. If I got a problem with my T wave, again, I probably have a problem with my ventricles, right? So now we got that making sense. You gotta know these times or you're gonna be lost. So we, we actually have EKG paper, which you're gonna see on the EKG paper that prints out the life pack, is you're gonna see that there are small little boxes. So one small box on EKG is 0 0.04 seconds. Now, if we have five small boxes, which you're going to see is one large box on the EKG paper, well, we do the math, 0 0.04 times 5, we get 0 0.20 seconds. And that equals one large box. So I have that here for you. So now remember our PR interval. When we're in class and we're measuring using our EKG calipers, I'll put right here, you can see what it looks like. We gotta measure some things. So the PR interval, we're gonna measure that. We want we wanna look between 0 0.12 seconds and 0 0.20 seconds. That's a normal PR interval. If it's too short or too long, we have an issue going on, right? QRS complex. Now, everyone agrees that a normal QRS complex is between 0 0.08 and 0 0.10 seconds. Everyone could agree with that. Now, we have a wide QRS we have a delayed QRS complex. So if the QRS complex is delayed, it's a little slow, it's a little slower. Okay, it's taking a little longer to get finished with this contraction. 0 0.10 to 0 0.12 is delayed. It's taking a little longer than we expect. Now a wide QRS complex is defined as wide when it's greater or it's at 0 0.12 or more. Okay, that's wide QRS. Now remember the QT interval. So males and females, the memory, just remember this, with females, their QT interval, we give them an extra second in a range. This is a range, a kind of a key to go off of. So if we look at QT interval, anywhere around 0 0.35, 0 0.45 seconds for males, 0 0.36, 0 0.46 for females, that's, a normal, good, solid base to look at. If we're way outside those parameters, something's clearly wrong. So that's our QT interval. So this was the stuff we gotta know. Now right here, I actually have the EKG wires themselves. So these right here, these are gonna be our electrodes that we're gonna stick on the patient. This is actually gonna connect into the life pack. So this end over here, I'll show you, let me pick it up. This end here is gonna be stuck into the life pack and this is where we're gonna stick in the patient. So let me just show you real quick. So I take my electrode and it snaps right in. You can see it here, it just snaps. There it goes. So I'm gonna snap these in. Then we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a mnemonic to remember this the rest of your career. So we snap these in, there we go. Perfect. So now we have our leads. Well, the thing is, it's great about them. We can see here like LA, that's gonna be like left arm, right? We have like RL, that's gonna be right leg. But I have a color code system. They're also by color. So here's how we remember it. So we have a white, a black, a red, and a green. So here's a mnemonic for you. So we have our right arm, right? So white is the same color as snow. So snow over the grass. Snow goes on top of the grass. So white and green. So right arm, you have your white lead. We have a green lead, which is 
same color as grass, on the right leg. Then we have our left side. Well, for your firefighters out there, there's smoke over fire, right? So what that means? Well, black is the same color as smoke. So that's the left arm. And then we have red, which is the same color as fire. So smoke over fire. And there it is. So in summary, we have snow over grass, smoke over fire, which means white lead, green lead, black lead, and then down is our red lead. And there it is. Now you're probably wondering where exactly do I want to stick these? What's the best location to actually stick these electrodes? So I want to share something interesting with you. The perfect placement. If you look on the inside of your wrist, if you see here, in humans, you can see here, even like me, you can see I'm human. <laughs> you can see here, I actually don't have any hair right inside of my wrist. So that's a great placement actually right there. But the problem with this EMS with a bumping ambulance, people like to move their hands, right? They're bumping their hands or maybe they're moving their hands around. It can be hard to get a good EKG tracing. So placing the, uh, the stickers on the humoral heads up here is really some of the best placement. You're not going to be moving your shoulders up and down like that. Now the other place for the legs, you wanna go as close down to the ankle as we can. That's gonna be the, the, the spot down there. We don't wanna put it like on their thighs. We wanna put it down more like on the calf, down near the ankles and that, I think calf to ankle area. I've actually created an entire EKG masterclass. In the first link in the description, this is what I give to all my students getting ready for paramedic school or advanced EMT school that wanna learn EKGs. In that masterclass, I literally teach you from literal scratch, like I'm your own instructor. Now in that masterclass, it is two hours and 40 minutes of material just on EKG interpretation, understanding basic EKGs. I go over every single rhythm in great detail. I show examples. I go through all of the electrical physiology, all of the anatomy that you need to know, every aspect of EKGs. And the reason I've done this is because so many students fail out of advanced EMT or paramedic school due to cardiology and EKGs. And I do not want that to be you. You get access to the entire presentation, the masterclass presentation. You get access to the EKG quiz to go over the material. And you also get access to all the slides. So all the slides are also included with the presentations, you have instant notes from me to you. It's the first link in the description down below. I look forward to your success. 